Hey guys, welcome back. So today's part three on this Yamaha EF3000 ISC inverter generator. If you missed the first two videos, I'll leave links to them up above and down in the description. But to make a long story short, this generator needs a new inverter module. And the good news is Yamaha supports their stuff. And despite the fact that this machine is almost 20 years old, they do sell the inverter module that this needs. The bad news is that module is $1,200. So yeah, I wasn't in a big rush to get this fixed. It's actually been over a year since that first video was published. And all fixed and running, this machine is only worth maybe $900. So it didn't really make sense to repair it at the time, but time has passed and the first two videos have generated some revenue and it has generated enough to offset the cost so that now it makes sense. So I did pull the trigger and finally ordered that module. Getting installed is a pretty easy process. So let me get you set up a little bit better. We'll get that module installed, fire up that engine, and hopefully this thing makes power. So let's take a look at what we got. It looks the part, although to be honest, it's completely different. The module that they sent, it is designed differently. It is not the same revision, but what they've done is they've adapted it down to the wire harness on this machine. So it's probably not a bad thing to use a newer design with an older machine. Most likely they corrected a few issues and hopefully this one will last at least as long as the old one. Now, there is a problem, though. If you saw the second video, you'll know I found some damage on the original wire harness, which supplies the three-phase input to the inverter. So I decided to just cut out the damaged section, and I cut the wire harness as well and connected them directly. And that made things a little better, but did not fix the issue. So my assumption was I could just order a new wire harness, if we ever got to this point. And I did order that harness actually about eight months ago and it's back ordered indefinitely. So that is an issue, thankfully, because this is a newer revision of the inverter module, it has these quick disconnects. So what I can do is remove this adapter, which was for the module that I cut and I ordered a newer style connector that should plug right in here. And thankfully they kept the design on the stator side the same. So this will plug right in to the generator revision that I have. So yeah, let's give it a try. This wire is supposed to run through the control panel and then right to there. So I'm not gonna hook it up permanently. I'm not gonna commit until I know this thing is doing what it should because I do have some reservation. I mean, there was a mouse nest in here and frayed wires that were arcing out right there on the corner of the bridge rectifier. You can see it's kind of burned. So there could be issues that I didn't catch. Hopefully not, but we'll find out. And don't forget this, this is the throttle control. 
the servo control. That's it. Got the test tank hooked up. Fuel's turned on and we've got a drop light connected and a space heater on standby. Now, the old module, it would make power sometimes and it could light up a light bulb, but it couldn't spin the fan on the space heater and that's because half the sine wave was missing. So let's get this started. Hopefully that light turns on, we'll check the voltage and then we'll try the space heater and hopefully that powers up normally. Right. not too bad and I was a bit nervous on this one you spend that kind of money you want to make sure you get the right part and in this case I think I did the engine started right up the light came on with no load we're at 123 volts 60 Hertz I then applied a 1500 watt load and the fan had no issue spinning and the generator held just fine at 123 volts 60 Hertz so I would say this thing is fixed we just need to get it back together and we'll roll it outside and do some extended load tests on it. I'm just going to give this wire some extra protection. This is the three phase input. It's up to about 250 volts. And that's, I think, what led to the original inverter failing when the wire rubbed through down there. So this will give it a little bit more protection. And I'm going to do the same for this wire right here. It already has some protection there, but this is the 120 volt output. So I want to make sure that's protected as well. So I think the hardest part to getting this thing back together is this fuel line right here. It connects to the back side where the fuel valve is, so 
I don't think you're gonna see much, but I'm gonna hook up this line, slide on the clamp, and should be good to put everything else on. It's definitely a tight fit, but the fuel line is on as well as the clamp. This piece is brand new and it was missing when I got this generator. So it looks a little out of place being that it's so shiny. All right, we're all back together. Actually, this is the first time it's been fully assembled since I picked this generator up over a year ago. Uh, the guy before me had disassembled a lot of the exterior, trying to gain access and look around to figure out what the issue was. Thankfully, he included most of the pieces, so it went back together pretty well. Anyway, before I bring it outside, I do want to start it indoors there's better lighting so we can get a look at that sine wave. And when I bring it outside, besides load testing it, I'm gonna let it run for close to an hour uh, because the last EF3000 I fixed suffered from vapor lock. And in that case, it was due to an excessively long fuel line. There was about three feet of fuel line coiled up on top of that engine. So I don't expect to have that issue here, but I do wanna make sure. So yeah, let's get it started real quick and take a look at that sine wave.
Okay, good. That sine wave looked perfect. So let's get it outside. This might be the only generator I've ever worked on that has ball bearings. It rolls very easily, at least on flat surfaces. Anyway, it does have a brake, so I've turned it on. So hopefully this does not roll away. So the plan is, just to get it started, we'll check the total harmonic distortion using the amp probe. Then I'm going to load it up. First to 1500, we'll double check the outputs. And then I'll bring it up to 2500 watts. And I'm going to hold it there for at least half an hour. And then I'm going to take the load off, see if we have any issues with vapor lock. Well, it's actually been over an hour at this point. I got a little sidetracked. Someone actually bought a generator while doing this test, and another person dropped off their Honda EU2000i. So there will be a video on that at some point. But for now, I'd say this one's doing pretty well. So I'm gonna take the load off, just let it cool down a bit, make sure there's no vapor lock issues, and then I think we'll be done. It ran quite well, I think for an hour and 10 minutes at a 2,500 watt load. So yeah, I would say this one is fixed. As far as the output goes, it was rock steady at 60 Hertz, about 122 volts with or without a load. And the harmonic distortion was also very good. It was 0.9% total harmonic distortion without a load. And under 2,500 watts, it only climbed to 1.6. And that is better than what the utility provides to my house. You know, anyway, this one 
took a while to get fixed. The repair itself was very easy. It took about 10 minutes to get that module installed. The cost, though, was the big obstacle here. Unless you have a customer willing to spend that kind of money, or in my case, a bit of YouTube revenue, I wouldn't say it makes a lot of sense. You know, that said, I am glad I fixed it. These are well-built machines, and I think the original failure was just due to the fact that the insulation had failed on the three-phase output on that generator. I think if that hadn't happened, the original module most likely would have still been good. And now that it has a new one and a little more protection on those wires, I think this should last quite a bit longer. Anyway, I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.